horticulture works, but like I said, you've got to find what works for you and your plants. I just have this feeling, and I could be wrong, that it might be a toilet. Oh, it's rooted in and it's growing, it's growing, it's freaking growing, it's growing, it's growing. Before you know it guys, what was an absolute overgrown mess becomes this. Good morning guys, welcome back to my allotment diaries. My name is Emma, these are my allotment diaries and I'm standing on my allotment site, not on my plot though. There's a shed here that's fallen down that I'm so curious about and interested in and every time I pass it, I think I wanna go over there and have a look at it. So on this Monday morning, I'm gonna go and have a look at it because no one's there, are they? No, coast is clear. No one's ever here at this time to be fair. They always come a little bit later. This is the shed here. I'm just so curious about it because my thought, my initial thought is, is that a toilet? Does somebody make their own toilet? And obviously it's all falling down. I don't think they mind if I just have a look. I'm not going to do anything. I just, just want to have a look at it. I just want to see what it is. Oh, it's on this plot here. I just want to see if I can find a way in or something. I just, what is it? That's what I want to know. What is it? I wonder if that's a toilet. I just have this feeling, and I could be wrong, that it might be a toilet. What do you reckon? I reckon it's the right shape for a toilet. I mean, it's a very dodgy one. I wouldn't want to use it, but what do you guys think? What is that? Is that a shed or is it a toilet? Who knows? Oh, look, sun's come out. I do get a lot of questions about where I go to the toilet at the plot and the answer is just wherever I can. <laughs> Let's not dwell on it. So guys, today's job at the allotment plot is going to be to cover my onions and garlic from the dreaded onion and garlic fly um, and I, I deleted this footage hence the fact I'm wearing a different jumper now um, but that is the job of the day so let's get on with it so I planted out my onion my red onion um, the other week and it needs to be protected sooner rather than later there is some kind of bug I think it's the allium leaf miner or something that can basically just eat through all of your onion and garlic so I brought this fleece stuff which is on Amazon and I'm just going to cover the entire structure you can see on the pictures here that's exactly what it's for. So that's exactly what I'm going to try and do with it. Where's my staple gun? Where's my staple gun? I don't know if my staple gun's gonna work anymore, but I'm gonna try and staple it right to the edge like that. Best thing I ever brought for my allotment plot was a staple gun. There's hardly anything you can't fix with a staple gun. The shed roof is fixed with a staple gun. Everything, everything you can see has been stapled at some point. Everything. It's amazing. It's a, it's an incredible thing. Oh no, look at it. It's just too high. Unless I just push the hoops in more, because I don't need the hoops to be that high, do I? Oh yeah, I could just do that. I'm such an idiot sometimes. I just make it smaller. You guys would have been screaming at the screen to make the structure smaller, to make the hoops smaller. I can hear you through the camera shouting at me. Just make the blooming structure smaller and it a bit. <sighs> so obvious, isn't it? This Mr. Magpie keeps coming and eating the robin's food. I mean, I guess you can have a little bit, but as long as you leave enough for them. It just feels too big for my plot, you know? This is like a kid's plot. This is not for you. Look, they've been chasing everything. Look at this. Does anyone else like feel like the birds this year are just like extra crazy or something? There's something in the air this year. There's something in the air. It is funny how sometimes the simplest solution is like the right one. Like you just sometimes I think too complicated, you know, I'm like, I need to like stitch it together and stuff. And actually I just had to make the hoops a bit lower and um, chop a couple of them and that was it. Um, so it's staple gun down now, that keep the, it from blowing away. 
as long as I never ever need to get in there again ever it should be fine <laughs> It's obviously quite a permanent solution. I think what I'll do is just pull a couple of staples out, check on it, and then staple gun it back again, I guess. But I just think, I just think staples are such an easy solution without all, using all the rocks and stuff. I usually put rocks on it and um, yeah, it doesn't always work. So the garlic and onion is now officially protected from whatever bug it is that likes to eat it. So that makes me feel a bit better. Right, I sowed some carrots here the other day um, and I put an awful sort of broken bit of fleece over it so I'm going to replace the fleece but I'm also going to strolch it first um, because slugs love new carrot seedlings. I have used strolch like that for probably about two years now and it is the only thing I've found that actually stops the slugs and snails sufficiently enough for stuff to grow. Um, it doesn't completely protect them and sometimes it doesn't work. A lot of the time it, it does though, but it doesn't work for everyone. I think Tony C. Smith, if you watch him on YouTube, he's just done a video talking about how awful strolch is and how he absolutely hates it and it just did nothing for his garden at all. It works for mine it didn't work for him. I think the thing with slug and snail defences is that you have to find the things that work for your garden because a lot of people swear by things like crushed shells and crushed eggshells and that's never worked for me. If anything that just attracts them and I've tried beer traps as well and I accidentally drown a frog and so I'll never use beer traps again because I just keep killing other animals by accident so you have to find the thing that works for your garden but I do think you have to have like a multi layered approach to it you can't just put one thing down um, I'm putting just strolch at the moment because it's early in the year but later on in the year I will use like ash from um, fires I will use coffee grounds I'll use more strolch down I'll just use like so many different things to try and deter them and then all together it tends to work a bit better also I found with strolch it's better to do a big area so like if I had like a plant there and I just strolched around the plant I don't think it would do anything like they tend to get to the plant but if you strolch a really big area around your plants it tends to work a bit better as well so that's something to bear in mind and also make sure the layer is quite thick quite thick you don't really want to see any of the soil underneath you just want a really thick mulched layer for me strolch works but like I said you've got to find what works for you and your plants and that's it. but some evil creature's been digging. I'll strolch over this bed as well, as much as I can. I don't think I've got enough strolch to do the whole bed, but um, because I've got so much in here, the second it comes up, the snails will get it. The slugs even, the slugs. It's not snails, is it? It's slugs. It's always slugs. <laughs> Right, there we go the entire bed has been mulched it's actually quite a thick layer i brought more than i thought and um, so the entire bed's now been mulched with strolch and the plants and new seedlings will definitely be able to grow through it because it is just a mulch um, it will also help to lock in moisture as well any mulch like this will help to lock in moisture um, hopefully keep the frost off as well so there's lots of benefits to using something like strolch on your beds anyway it's just that the main reason I'm using it on, on my beds is to try and deter slugs and snails um, and have some form of protection. I mean, to be fair, like if strolch was ever gonna work, this is how it would work. You know, like I've put a thick layer on, I've covered the entire bed. So if it didn't work and the slugs came and ate it all, then it's just official that strolch would never work. It would just, it just couldn't work, you know? <laughs> Does that make sense? Like I haven't scrimped on this. I've done exactly what it says on the packet. And yeah, I mean, this is the best that you could possibly do using strolch. 
but as they start to grow as they fingers crossed hopefully start to grow at some point in in this year um i will of course keep you updated and let you know how the strolch goes i think i might just leave it as strolch on this bed and then i can actually do a proper experiment for you and actually show you how well strolch is so we're just going to leave strolch um, and i'll let you know planted a load of broad beans in here with my son. I planted hundreds actually, absolutely loads of them. Um, and none of them are coming up yet. So I'm gonna dig one and have a look and see what it's doing and make sure that it's actually coming up. I got sore throat or something. I feel like when I'm talking, it's like my voice is breaking. It's my voice breaking. Anyway, apologies, it's annoying. Right, I'm gonna dig one right at the end. I don't know where it'd be though, but we're gonna just have a dig. We'll have a dig. See if we can see any signs of life in here. I always dig my plants. Everyone always tells me off for doing this, but I always, always do it. And I just can't stop. I just can't stop, I just can't stop. The thing is, if it's not growing, I need to know. I should have put a stick in where one of them was so I'd know where to dig and it could have been my little experiment. Oh gosh, oh, I found one. Ah, oh, it's rooted in and it's growing. It's growing. It's freaking growing. It's growing. It's growing. It's growing. There he is. He's alive. He's alive. He's got that coming up. He's rooted in. Yeah, he's absolutely lovely. He is alive. They're alive. Oh gosh, they're alive. They're alive. God, the absolute joy I feel when I realise that I haven't killed them and that stuff is actually growing. Right, let's cover him back up. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. That must be the weirdest thing for that seed. He's sitting there under the ground and all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, light. And then all of a sudden it all goes dark again. It'd be like a miracle. It'd be spreading the word to all the other beans about the miracle that took place today. Right, I've got a little bit of strolch and because they're starting to grow, I'm going to just strolch as much as I can. I don't think I've got enough for the whole bed, but we'll whack as much of this on as we can. now told you there's something in the air this year with these birds right it's not a very thick layer because i don't have very much left but the next time i come i will um top it up and put even more down there but i think it's important to have something rather than nothing and they are growing gosh guys we're actually gonna have broad beans in here <gasps> i'm actually getting garlic and onion i'm actually gonna get broad beans this is just mind-blowingly exciting i'm actually gonna have broad beans to pick this is crazy <laughs> i can't believe it i can't believe it's growing right this is great news brilliant right i'm actually gonna leave it there today um i did have a couple of other jobs i wanted to do the wildlife area and pinning some other stuff down but i think my throat's going a bit i can feel it sort of hurting and my voice keeps going funny so i think i'm sort of coming down with something so i'm going to get home because it is a bit cold and dreary today and it's just not lifting my spirits the way that i thought the allotment plot would today i am very very pleased that i got those jobs done um and this is the thing about allotment gardening right it feels a lot if, if you're trying to tackle the entire thing in one go and do everything at once it feels too much if you just pop down here whenever you feel like it even just for half an hour you just cover something you just stroke one bed if you just do something it all adds up and every time you come here you know those little things that you've done they'll just add up and the, it'll just get done all of it you know you've just got to take it step by step it's impossible to look at the whole thing and go i need to do everything today like that's just ridiculous so just take it step by step keep turning up even if you don't feel like it just go down for 20 minutes do one thing just one thing that's the best possible allotment advice that i could ever give you is just to come down and just do one thing at a time one step at a time and um, before you know it before you know it guys what was an absolute overgrown mess suddenly out of nowhere seemingly becomes this you know a workable allotment plot that looks so manageable we've got individual beds we've got pathways we're starting to put in the structure of it we're starting to plant and it's just 
all come together and if you just ask me how did how did you do it how did it all come together the answer is I don't know I just kept showing up and one day it just became this <laughs> it's actually true it's actually true I don't know what to say to people when I say how did you do it just like a bit by bit really I just did it I don't know it just turned up um, so just keep turning up to yours and it will get done, I promise. And don't get overwhelmed. It's March, but don't get overwhelmed. Just start whacking stuff in. Do what you can when you can. I hope you've enjoyed my vlog today. If you have, subscribe to my channel. I'll be back on Wednesday. See you then. Have a lovely gardening week. Bye.